You're leading Facebook's product team, and you've just uncovered that users and relationships post less than those who are single. It's a puzzling trend that begs the question, how do we turn this around? How would you tackle this issue? What might we want to do to increase engagement for this demographic? Today, we have the pleasure of having Gunjan with us, a highly experienced data analyst. Hi, Gunjan. I'm Alma. Today, I will be your coach, and I'm one of the coaches at Interview Query. I'm currently a data analyst at Lyft. Gunjan, can you kindly share a bit about yourself and what you hope to achieve from the session? Sure. I currently work at Wayfair in their advanced analytics uh, division for uh, marketing. And I lead a team of two technical analysts. And uh, I'm currently targeting um, roles such as uh, product data scientists. And uh, from this session, um, it would be great if we can um, overview how I respond to the questions and get feedback on what I can improve on. Sure. Thank you so much. Let's go over the question together. Do you mind sharing your screen? Sure. Okay. So this is the question. I can go through the question once again, just so that I understand what is it that I'm exactly answering. Uh, mm -hmm. Partners tend to make fewer polls and how would you approach tackling this issue? What might we want to do to increase engagement? for the demographic and the people that we're targeting are people who specify that they are in a relationship. Okay. Uh, I can maybe, uh, is it okay if I type some uh, questions that I'm currently uh, com they're coming up in my mind and then maybe I can ask you then ask you those questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Okay, so mainly two questions that I have are about um, the report that we have. Um, so we are taking that report as a fact and we are assuming that yes, for sure, if people are in a relationship, then their uh, number of posts that they number of posts that they post are lower than the people who say that they're single, right? Um, so let's back up a bit. Um, the, so the question states that it is it has been noted that people with partners tend to make fewer posts. However, this is not confirmed. Um, so oh, I would like you to, yeah, so I would first like you to explore like how you would possibly confirm it. And then for the second part of the question, we can just assume that it is confirmed and explore how okay. you would tackle it. Okay. So um, uh, maybe I can take a few seconds to understand what points we can yeah. um, use to verify that. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the thing that comes to my mind is if uh, this was just an observation, then it would be better if we can uh, get some statistically significant uh, number, if this actually is a difference or not. So to do mm -hmm. that, um, I'm thinking we can do, I mean, there are two options. One is either we can look back and see, um, uh, look at two different demographics, people who have um, been in a relationship in a, let's say during a past month or, and then people who have not been in a relationship and uh, have mentioned that their status is single and observe uh, the difference between their uh, metrics. And we can define the metric depending on what we are interested in measuring. So if the post, the report is saying that the number of posts are down, if that's mm -hmm. what we want to confirm, we can go with that. But if we are focusing on engagement, maybe we can create a different metric for engagement. Um, is there something that we want to verify uh, specifically or we can go with the number of posts? Um, well, so far we've just observed that the number of posts is down, but okay. overall we're concerned with overall engagement. That makes sense. So because yeah. uh, the goal of Facebook is to make sure people are well connected to each other and they're creating a community, I guess we can create yeah. a metric based on um, interaction. So that could be some guessing. So comments, um, uh, yes, there are posts, um, likes. Um, if we care about uh, app usage, that could be a part, but that, uh, uh, that could probably translate into a metric such that like how many times a user is opening the app. Mm -hmm. uh, messages could also be uh, another metric, but if that's not something that we want to consider because that's not a public metric, mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, take that out. So I would say uh, we should take all these things into consideration. It could, we could just count that as zero or one, like commented and not commented. Um, 
mm-hmm. um, and then see how many comments there are how many posts there are we could combine mm-hmm. this and just see how many interactions uh, not giving weight to each uh but if we want we could also uh, uh put a weight on something that we care about like if we really care about post then we can put a weight on mm-hmm. um for now maybe um we can have everything as a combined metric um and say that in a day uh, a user had let's say uh, 10 interactions mm-hmm. um and we can see whether there is a significant difference between uh people who say their mm-hmm. relationship status is single versus not single Mm-hmm. um i guess um so here is where we can then um we have to understand whether we are going uh, on like quasi experiment route or like depending on the existing groups or are we uh then creating a an ab experiment where we are selecting people uh randomly but then again uh, we have to consider that we cannot change the relationship status of people so we have to select from that particular group um mm-hmm. so we can uh, then define a hypothesis a null hypothesis would be something like uh, no there is no difference in the interaction mm-hmm. level um and then alternative hypothesis would be yes there is a difference but then we need to also um understand what is the practical significance um uh, of this difference like how much difference is good enough for us to take an action mm-hmm. so let's say we can define that and we say that um i can take a guess that let's say uh 10 interactions uh uh per user let's say that is a significant difference for this um so we are basically checking uh, in this experiment whether uh, we see this much difference in the two groups or not mm-hmm. does that make sense yeah Okay. So let's say you run the experiment and you yeah. verify that um it is statistically significant that people in relationships mm-hmm. make fewer posts. So then how would you approach this issue? Um and are we also assuming that the difference is uh, 10 interactions or more? So yeah, we, we can Okay. All right. So uh we verified the result um uh, and the test was um successful. So uh next would be us trying to understand um uh, how can we solve this issue and improve it so maybe the first thing i would look at is what are the current pain points so that we know what to improve on um so in that case i would like to understand what is the current user journey and what where there are people churning so uh maybe i can write that down so okay uh by user journey i i probably mean what are the different things that users can do and let's say when they start interacting where do they stop so for example if they um uh, start the post um but uh, do not finish so that mm-hmm. would indicate a problem area in uh, creating a post mm-hmm. um so we could uh, create metrics like uh people number of people who started the post but did not finish divided by the number of people who started the post uh and that could help us understand whether we have an issue in uh creating a post um other so if there is one then we can uh try to create more features for the post and so on um another thing uh could be uh let's say privacy so maybe uh people are um not posting because uh they don't want uh their entire friends group to know about uh, their relationship status or the people that they are hanging out with so um this is something that uh we can uh understand by doing a survey and uh, also understand what are the general pain points that we cannot measure uh so user satisfaction satisfaction is uh, usually hard to gauge so survey would be helpful in such cases um let's say we have some of these um uh, understandings uh, should i list more points here or no uh, sure are these okay feel okay. free to take all the space to brainstorm uh so maybe survey um during um another thing would be um uh we can also look at uh between different types of interactions 
what interaction are they doing and what are they, what are they not doing so for example maybe some people are uh, okay with commenting but they are not okay with posting so maybe we can mm-hmm. uh, work on like that uh, creating features for more creative posts and things like that so um, if we uh, create different buckets for engagement uh, and then see um, which type of en- engagement is low uh, and then we can target that um so i guess uh, those are the initial verification uh, things that we can do and once mm-hmm. we have that then um i guess we can focus on creating features that can boost uh the uh, the weakness that we have or we can see whether uh, whether there are any bug fixes that we need to do like the reason for churn is probably what we are trying to target in the next stage mm, i see so um, let's look at the number three that you typed in. Can you explain what, can you explain again what buckets means? So by buckets, I mean different types of engagement. Uh, I'm going to just type it here. So let's say oh, uh, okay. comments, posts, messages, uh, 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 live events. Uh, and then we can see uh, what is it that we need to include. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's say that... So, yeah, Sorry, keep going. Uh, I was just going to assume one of the features, let's say posts, because uh, uh, that's what we started with. And then yeah, I was going I was to... just going to say that too. Let's assume okay. number one is correct. All right. um, so I guess the next step would be to think of different features to um, improve that. Can I take mm-hmm. a minute or so to list some features down? Um, I guess uh, we can go through these five and then Uh, I'll see if I can think of anything else. Uh, Mm -hmm. So the current features that I thought of are um, collaborations. So that way um, users can not just like one user might be uh, um, more active than the other one in the relationship. Maybe we can uh, leverage that. And if we um, allow collaboration posts where only one person is creating the post and posting, Mm -hmm. but then the other person also gets to be involved in it. And maybe that will help them feel a little bit inclusive and increase uh, their engagement. So that could be an option. So for Um, collaboration posts, are you thinking like collaboration between like between a person in a relationship and a person who's single or just like in general? Oh, you want to um, roll out this picture I was thinking like more, I was thinking more of uh, people who are um, in relationship, um, okay. like with each other. So the two oh, okay. people, however, um, if none of them are posting, it would be, if, if you're allowing collaboration, it would be okay to allow collaboration between any two uh, friends. I think okay, that it. will also help boost um, better. So okay, any cool. two friends would be uh, an option. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second is memories. So that way, if people um, sometimes don't know what should I post, um, Facebook can give them reminders of, hey, you know, a year ago this happened or a week ago, a month ago, like this is an anniversary uh, and could be a celebration. So um mm-hmm. Uh, anniversary, oh, one year, etc. Um, and that way, uh, it could be a um, um, easy nudge uh, mm-hmm. for the people to um, create the post and um, increase the number of posts. The third one would be uh, auto-generated short videos or reels. So sometimes uh, this uh, is generated in our photo gallery. If Facebook can do that, uh, depending on the past events of the user and the partners together. So it could be something like uh, things you two did together. Uh, it could also be applied to the, them and their friends. But uh, what I'm thinking here is, uh, let's say it's a one year anniversary. They uh, Then Facebook can come up with a short reel of, hey, this is what you did you know, in a year. And it's just a juxtaposition of separate photos but with the music on Mm. Uh, and that way they don't have to create a reel but it's already created Mm -hmm. and it's a nice uh, memory Mm -hmm. Um, and because it's already created by Facebook it's easy to post Um, the fourth one is Facebook timeline Facebook timeline is very famous um, and it's very um, 
easy to understand what happened uh, in the past few years. We can do the same for relationships. So that way, uh, the two people who are in a relationship can uh, then showcase what all, what all they did, if they're, what were the milestones, and, um, and they can also uh, select the photos and add them or select this, uh, the title of what happened this year and that year. Uh, and they, and if they want, they can put it on the, um, not as a post, but um, as a separate section, which is there if people want to see it. So yes, there is relationship status. And then another thing could be relationship timeline that if people are interested, then they could see it. Mm -hmm. um, the fifth one, um, uh, usually people are interested in fun games and filters uh, and it's yeah. a very lightweight activity to do um, if we can provide them with uh, some fun quizzes or games that they can play with their partners and uh, post so for example um, what would be um, your couple equivalent in uh, Disney characters something like that Mm -hmm. uh, and these are very non-serious posts that people mm -hmm. are usually okay to post um, if they don't want to share anything about their personal lives. Uh, this mm -hmm. is something that can be created and posted without them having to share any information. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, these are some of the features that I thought of. So for number two and three, after you show a user like their memory or some sort of like auto-generated video, how does that relate to user engagement ultimately so um um you mean that when once you show them the uh created product mm -hmm. um how, it, i mean it depends on what do they do with it right so um yeah. the things that they can do are wait, uh, let me maybe like i guess what i'm trying to ask is like how do you ensure that showing them these things will lead to higher engagement Oh, so when they're showing them, when we're showing them these things, we are showing them uh, with the intention that uh, we saw, we created this uh, beautiful reel, depending on uh, using your memories. Would you like to post this and share it with your friends? Got it. Okay. So that, that's what I was thinking. And then it will probably increase the number of posts they have. And then the people, uh, the friends that they have uh, will come back and say either congratulations or this is beautiful. Okay. And that will improve uh, interaction between them and their friends and mm -hmm. usually when people uh, post or comment on uh, your post uh, you tend to go back and look at their profiles and mm -hmm. then comment back and that will probably uh, create a snowball effect is what i'm thinking um mm -hmm. yeah okay cool so let's assume you go and you implement all these features how would you assess the success of these features mm -hmm. Uh, um, I guess we would have to go back to our uh, original goal of why we created this and that was a uh, number of posts. So maybe I can take a minute to understand uh, in what ways we can measure uh, the success of post creation um, and then we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I'm trying to understand here is if I were uh, managing this, what are the things that I would like, what are the questions that I would like to be answered uh, to know whether this is doing good or not? Um, so I guess the first one would be um, number of users using this, like how many users are actually interacting? Uh, I This is not a metric, I'm just trying to create questions. Mm -hmm. okay. um, cool. So how many users? by using this feature. Um, mm -hmm. We would also like to know whether there is any lift in uh, pre or post, but that wouldn't be statistically significant uh, mm -hmm. study. So we can redo the test and see whether the lift has, uh, the difference has uh, decreased or not. Mm -hmm. uh, um, how many users? Uh, redo the test um, and then um, we can measure the num the post KPIs again. So that would be, so we are doing that in our uh, test. So let me hear our focus metric being, let's say number of posts per user. Uh, and that could be a daily KPI or a weekly KPI because um, it depends uh, on the day of the week. Um, the engagement can depend on the day of the week. So mm -hmm. we can uh, have that daily or weekly. Um, how many users are using this feature? 
So that could be our, let's say, daily active users. Um, we could also try to understand uh, how many people are responding to the notifications now. Uh, and uh, that way we know whether uh, this is helping or not. So um, notification response rate. So that could be the number of people who respond to the notification positively versus the uh, versus um, the number of notifications a user responds to positively versus to divided by the total number of notifications. So mm -hmm. um, positive response divided by so what i mean by positive response here is um you can either uh, uh click on the notification and then go inside the app and spend some time if you swipe mm -hmm. it that's a negative uh response so we need to uh, distinguish between that mm -hmm. um we can measure the um uh, number of times people have used certain features if we are measuring the success of a certain feature mm -hmm. um so features using the new features um i'm guessing because the feature is new we will have to give them some time to get used to it and probably um, have some pop-ups saying that we have added this new feature um this will probably mean that we'll have to extend the time of the test if we decide to redo the test um, mm -hmm. to take the uh, novelty effect into consideration. Um, yeah, these are some of the things that I can think of. Okay, yeah, that looks really great. Yeah, thank you for participating in this interview. How did you feel about the interview? It went, we went in a lot of detail, which is nice. Um, mm. And um, uh, thanks for pointing me towards uh, a, a specific point when I was going really broad. Mm -hmm. um, I my usually uh, usually my uh, concern when I'm answering product questions is um, um, am I going in the am I talking about the right points and mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'm afraid of uh, responding uh, immediately. So uh -huh. um, that's my um, general concern whenever I interview for product uh, questions. Uh, so it, so yeah, um, I mean, I, um, wrote things down, but, uh, also the, um, good point here was that I was writing things down. So everything was in front of me, mm -hmm. yeah. but that doesn't happen in the interviews. Uh, so, uh, sometimes I write the points down and sometimes I forget what I talked about. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, uh, happy yeah. to hear some of that. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I really like the way you explained your thoughts. I thought it was very organized. Um, I thought that your communication skills and style is very like easy to follow and understandable. Um, I thought that you were really good at brainstorming. So when you thought of like the features to include, um, you thought of a really like a lot of like fun features, um, <laughs> which is good for the setting of this problem because this problem is about like relationship statuses and that tends to be like a lighter subject that's more fun. Um, and I really liked how in the beginning when you were talking about the testing that you would do and you were trying to pick like a metric to test, you tied it with the overall business goal, which is to increase engagement. Um, and um, I thought it was really good. And it's also like really important that you clarify like what the overall business goal is because like the question does ask for number of posts but yeah. um, just to clarify like whether or not number of posts is the ultimate goal I think is a very like good move to make mm -hmm. and shows like understanding of like overall business functions um for areas to work on I thought you could have like asked a little more clarifying questions in the beginning like you kind of just like dove right into it um but maybe just like pause pause in the beginning to ask more questions like for example you could have asked questions like how does a user even like define their relationship like you know like is this like a thing they're showing on their profile is this like private to the user like what is a relationship like do users mm -hmm. like when users get out of a relationship do they like re-update their status um, and I think maybe you could have asked a little more questions like more about like the time frame and the geographic frame, like what areas are we seeing this happening to users? Or like, is this like an issue we saw in the past year or two years? Or like, when did this start occurring? Um, and I just think that it's important to keep in mind that like throughout like product metric interviews in particular, um, not to view it as an assessment, but more like a conversation with the person. 
Um, so there were like a lot of points where you kind of just like went with it and you kept going and you kept talking, but it would be nice if you just like pause once in a while and just ask the interviewer like, oh, does this make sense? Like, what do you think about these three things that I listed out? Um, like, for example, there was one point where like when you started talking about the features, you made an assumption um, that something was correct and you kind of just like went with it. But it would have been nice for you to pause and just say like, oh, I'm going to make this assumption. Is that OK? And just like engage the interviewer more. So pause um, intermittently mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, ask more clarifying questions. Um, yeah. yeah, it's better to cover. Uh, clarify everything in the beginning then later know that I'm trying to solve the wrong problem mm -hmm. okay um do you have any uh feedback on how to close a product question so okay you have uh, mm -hmm. yeah. everything what do yeah, you say so to usually, it? usually well if you're in an interview and you know that the interview has a certain like end point and you know you just have like say like three minutes left mm -hmm. um I think it's helpful if you just like summarize everything that you talked about um I see. so yeah so maybe just like go back to the beginning and then um go back through like what the problem is and then like what you're trying to solve or what you're trying to define or clarify and then like go through like the different points or steps that you would make mm -hmm. and then if it's one of those questions where it's just asking for like you to define metrics then maybe just like list your metrics in order of importance okay uh, when somebody asks uh, for uh, creating metrics, how um, how specific do you need to get about the metric? Like, uh, is it okay to say number of uh, active users per day, or do I need to write down the formula for how exactly to measure it? What is what is expectation here? Um, I think that will like depend a lot on the interviewer. Typically, you want to define it enough that there is some sort of like number or stat and then also a time frame um, generally that's good enough so like number of users per day or something um, but that's like a conversation you could have with the interviewer and you can look at their preference it says yeah okay cool any other thoughts you have i've been using interview query for more than a month now and um, initially when i was uh, preparing i didn't really know what to prepare or mm -hmm. what am i missing but then and in interview query, there are a lot of different types of questions and also people comment. So it's really helpful uh, and it's very relevant to what's being asked in the interviews. I just wanted to mention that it's been uh, really helpful. What is the most challenging part of the problem for you and how did you overcome it? I think the most challenging part for me is uh, trying to understand uh, what direction to go. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and I try to like for example then um i was trying to say okay um should we take this into consideration that the report uh, is as a fact um and i was assuming that and then uh, i asked the question okay it's a fact and then you know maybe i can list down the features and the uh, user journey and then you mentioned that oh no but it's not a fact so um mm. So that usually uh, happens during my interviews that, um, okay, like I I probably select the wrong direction that the, then the interviewer wants me to go. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess, like you mentioned, uh, instead of uh, assuming, if I just say that, okay, I'm assuming this is the case, then they can correct me earlier than later. And that's, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that, that's something that's really challenging. Yeah, it's always important to clarify what direction you're going in and if that even is the correct direction. Cool. So overall, what did you learn from this experience? I think it's important to stay calm um, mm -hmm. and mock interviews uh, help a lot in uh, soothing mm -hmm. your nerves. Um, I think the second thing uh, would be that um, when I'm talking, I feel like if, there, if there's a pause, I feel like there's, it's a very long pause but mm. um, maybe it's not. And uh, if I'm asking a lot of questions, I feel like I'm coming off as uh, somebody who doesn't know this or doesn't know where to go. Mm. But like you said, it's more helpful to ask more clarifying questions. So uh, I should probably mm -hmm. ask more than I currently do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pause thing is definitely like very relatable. Oftentimes when we talk, we think that our pauses sound like very, very long pauses, but in reality, yeah. they're just 
very like minuscule and pauses can help like emphasize certain points that you have and can enhance your like communication skills. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to use pauses. You're probably not sounding like you're pausing too long. Um, when you think you're pausing a lot, you're probably just sounding like you're talking normally. Um, and yeah, I do think that asking a lot of questions is definitely like a good idea, especially for this question, because this question was just like so open ended, like you can go in so many directions. Um, so yeah, asking questions would be very helpful. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, this question will be linked in the description below. And if you want to see more questions like this, head to interviewquery.com.